All right, well, a Fox News alert. Overnight, the Senate making history, passing the first major tax rewrite in 31 years. Now, it's up to the House to revote on the bill and get it to the president's desk today. Trey, right now on a very busy morning on Capitol Hill is House Speaker Paul Ryan. Mr. Speaker, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Morning, Steve. Ainsley, Pete, what happened to Brian? Did he sleep in this morning? <laughs> you know, he's he he's yeah. really out somewhere yeah. with his book. Too much winning. Yeah. Too, much, too, too much, much winning, winning. <laughs> exactly. Just like you. Too much winning. Okay, so I saw you with the big hammer. I saw that it passed. So why do you have to redo it today? Because we had such a good time yesterday, we just wanted to do it again today. <laughs> you know? Look, we love uh, that. The, go ahead. There are these bizarre Senate rules. I won't go into the details other than these, there are these bizarre Senate rules. And a couple of small, tiny provisions dropped out because of these bizarre Senate rules. Uh, we didn't think they should have dropped out, but they did. It doesn't really materially affect the bill very much. And so we will re-vote uh, and pass it out again today. Okay. Mr. Speaker, I mean, uh, you were the chair of the Budget Committee. You've been passionate about tax reform for the, your entire time in the House. What did it feel like to hold that gavel? And you slammed it. We all saw it. And so hard and that you lost However. it. Uh, what, what did that moment feel like for you? I, I got a little carried away. You can see that. I, I was very excited. It was a very emotional Ooh. time because I used to be, uh, you know, Jack Kemp was my mentor. Yep. And I've been working on this issue pretty much my adult life because I, I, I just feel so passionately that this is going to help get people from welfare to work. It's going to get people higher wages, better jobs. It's going to put the American economy in the lead in the global economy again. So I feel very passionate about it. I was a little passionate. I scared the heck out of the parliamentarian <laughs> sitting next to yeah. me. Um, and I was broke the thing, but I just got a little excited. So what is your message for the people who live in the high, high tax states? Because, listen, as Americans, it's going to be great for our country if you look at the numbers, if you read the bill. But for the folks who are watching us that do live in the high tax states, how can you promise them? I mean, we, we were told the president was you know, running. He said everyone's taxes are going to go down. People voted for him for that reason. But in the high tax states, because of the local and state tax, that's not necessarily the case. And a lot of those folks are middle class individuals. Well, actually, if you actually run the numbers, Ainsley, and we've yeah. run a lot of numbers, okay. um, the average taxpayer in every income group, including people in these high tax, takes, high tax states, still get a tax cut. Really? Um, very high income people, perhaps if, if they have a very clever accountant and are using lots of deductions, maybe they'll see it differently. But the average taxpayer in every income group um, gets a tax cut uh, everywhere. Um, I would just tell people, go to fairandsimple.gop. That's the website that explains how this all works. And we did make some changes in this bill in the final version to try and accommodate some of those concerns in the high mm -hmm. tax states. Number one, all tax rates go down. The top rate and every rate in between are lowered. So you get lower rates across the board. Number two, we double the standard deduction. That means you go to the, you can see our postcard. I, I like to bring this thing up. Mm -hmm. Still nearly nine out of 10 people in America will be able to do their taxes on the form the size of a postcard Great. because they'll take that standard deduction. But also, we maintained a $10,000 tax deduction, not just for property taxes, which was the House bill, but also for mm -hmm. state local income taxes. So you get to use that if you choose to do that. And the mortgage interest deduction is still largely maintained. Right. So those things, in combination with doubling the child tax credit, lowering rates across the board, make just about every taxpayer whole, the vast, vast, vast majority of taxpayers. Is there somebody really wealthy with a good accountant that uses lots of deductions and when we close loopholes, they lose some of those that may right. not see it that same way. Sure. But on average, everybody's going to benefit. The average tax cut for families, for your viewers, the median family of foreign America is going to get a $2,059 wow. tax cut. That's great. So that's real money for real people who are really struggling. I yeah. Indeed. Mr. Speaker, let me ask you about uh, people in those high tax states. I, you know, some of the higher individuals with all those deductions and stuff uh, might get a tax hike, uh, but they would be few and far between, according to what you said. However, right. do you think ultimately the result of this tax cut bill is people in those high tax states, their state legislatures are going to have to do something about the high right. tax rate? Yeah, that, that's the big argument, uh, Steve, because, look, uh, I'm, th these numbers may not be exactly accurate, but what, what members of Congress with conservatives see is basically 46 states are paying higher federal taxes to subsidize higher state taxes in right. about four states. Mm -hmm. And so that's the point. It's really a fairness argument, which is, should states, uh, people in states that have balanced budgets and limited governments and lean governments be paying higher federal taxes 
for those state governments that keep increasing taxes, keep increasing spending. And that's really the argument that's yeah. also at play here. And so that's a fair point. Mr. Speaker, 50 years ago, a Democratic president cut income taxes from 91 percent to 65 in JFK. Yeah. Yet yesterday, not 65 a single, is still pretty high, still very high. But yeah. not a single yeah. Democrat voted for this yesterday. What does that say about the state of the Democratic Party? And, and also, should, will Republicans benefit in 2018 from this? It's a really good question, Pete. Uh, look, I'm a student of these things. I've studied these, these for years. Uh, Jack Kennedy, the, we don't have Jack Kennedy Democrats anymore. Jack Kennedy was saying rising tide lifts all votes, cut tax rates across the board. It's going to help the economy. You do not have Democrats saying that anymore. So the progressive left had basically gripped their party. I honestly thought at the end of the day, we might get maybe a Joe Manchin or, or, or some of these mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Democrats in the Senate from these red states that Donald Trump won. They, they all stuck with the progressive hard left against tax relief and tax reform. So I do think this is not in their interest, not only just politically, but just economically speaking. And when people see their withholdings go down in February, when they see their tax cut, that's going to change the view of this because it's going to give us better jobs, higher wages, bigger paychecks in a simplified system, and people are going to get their taxes cut. Yeah. That's good for everybody, and I think, I think they're going to you know, regret not having supported at least some of them, I believe. Yeah. Okay, well, he's going to have the, the gavel in his hand again later again on today. Again today, and I'll try to be a little tempered. We'll be watching. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mr. Speaker, thank Mr. you.